Hey guys, Eddie here. Today we're going to be discussing why Warren Buffett dumping stocks should worry you. Um, this obviously comes as a result of the Berkshire Hathaway conference. So uh, Warren Buffett, one of the world's greatest investors, he actually announced that he sold $6.5 billion uh, of equities. And this was mainly airlines, so American Airlines, Delta, Southwest, uh, etc. Um, and he's basically said that he was wrong on the sector. Um, and he bought very little, didn't buy back any Berkshire Hathaway shares. Um, he's a long-term bull that is essentially not very bullish. So this is definitely something to to look at. He says nothing is attractive despite the 35% drop in markets that we saw in March. Um, and this is a common misconception. Just because something drops in price doesn't mean it's good value, right? If we're looking at a, an equity, it's only worth as much as the discounted future cash flows, uh, among other things that it can generate. So with so much uncertainty around the coronavirus in terms of earnings, cash flows, you know, modeling that and what a company's intrinsic value is, uh, it, you know, is very difficult. Um, so he's sitting on the sidelines with 137 billion in cash and this is a hedge for potentially when the Fed fails to prop up stocks uh, with that liquidity. Uh, he said that the Fed acted too quickly uh, and it's a strong um, you know, it's against Berkshire actually doing any deals right now. Um, the core sectors, obviously, they got affected by the sell-off. REITs, energy, airlines, um, you know, they're, they're sectors that are core reflections of the broader economy. Uh, Technology, obviously, is seen probably as one of the safe havens from this. Um, they are insulated somewhat um, from complete revenue um, destruction, um, but they're definitely not immune um, from a slowdown in personal you know, consumption, consumer uh, consumption, or business spending. Um, so there's definitely more risk to the downside than there is to the upside, I, I believe, right now. Um, we're getting terrible economic data out, terrible earnings data, although we know that they were going to be bad. Um, so now probably could be a good time to you know, rebalance your portfolio risk. Uh, and this is something that I should uh, definitely emphasizes that you know if the fangs or the fangs including Microsoft for example and uh, paired with Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett's you know uh, reluctance uh, to buy stocks and obviously sell stocks um, this you know why, why would you buy here I mean lots of things are uh, telling you not to um, you know the market's come a long way from the March bottoms great okay, take your profits now, um, you know, valuations are extremely stretched and there could be, you know, huge risk um, to the downside. Um, so um, definitely maybe a good time to look at your overall portfolio and take some chips off the table. Um, stocks, obviously, uh, they've notched their biggest monthly gain um, since 1987, and this has cut losses to the S&P, um, you know, b below or around 10% for the year. And this is obviously uh, driven by Fed liquidity, global central bank easing. I've talked about this, and I'm kind of bored about talking about this analysis because I do think it's quite lazy now. Um, but it's something that can't be ignored. You know, expected to hit 12 trillion by 2021. 38% um, of GDP, more than 20%, uh, more than QE one, two, three um, combined. Um, so huge liquidity that the Fed's propping up markets. Um, so investment grade credit, uh, junk credit, um, they're stepping in uh, and taking the other side. There's been record in issuance from companies uh, raising liquidity um, because they know that they've got a, bu uh, a buyer in the Fed. Um, so stocks have you know, come roaring back, Amazon and Netflix powering the way, um, and they've gained about 40% since those March lows. Um, and this is obviously a trend of work from home. You know, Everyone's at home using Prime religiously for everything. Netflix has come out with some great documentaries, Tiger King, uh, um, the Last Dance, Michael Jordan, you know, keeping people entertained. So they've seen record usage, uh, number of subscriptions. Um, Galeed Sciences again is a major driver of this. You know, there's been positive, both negative and positive announcements. This stock was in my coronavirus winners and losers on March 7th. Um, they're up around 29% uh, as a result of the virus drug, obviously. Um, they're probably our best hope. I do not think um, that they will have, uh, let's say, a vaccine that can be mass produced until, let's say, mid-year 2021 or 20, uh, the end of 2021. Uh, with earnings, you know, they're bad. 
we know they're bad. You know, the coronavirus, although slightly sudden, was um, you know analysts have taken that into account when they're you know they're producing their price targets and earnings. Um, so when they come in as you know bad or in line with the expectations, you know you're not going to see too much um, you know downside from from those announcements. Um, but anything better than that or in line, you may see some kind of relief rallies. A big warning, I think, is the tech concentration. So it's the market cap of the five largest companies, so Amazon and Netflix, for example, um, that I've talked about. But now I'm talking about the FANGs more specifically. Um, so the five largest companies as a share of the S&P 500 has now reached 20% of the whole index, which is crazy, even more for the NASDAQ. 100, which is already uh, quite heavily tech focused. The forward multiple, so the forward PE multiple is 25.3 times. And this is the same as the height of the tech bubble. The average PE following the market bottoms of the 87 crash, the tech bubble, global financial crisis were about 10.4 to 16.4 and 14 uh, times respectively. So price has to come down um, if we are to bottom uh, from this. So I do think we retest the lows. I know there's um, lots of kind of uh, different calls about, you know, we've seen the lows, the lows have been put in, but I do think we see another sell-off uh, in equities. It's amazing to see how far we've come, 700% since the 2009 global financial crisis low, um, and they have been emblematic um, for the US technology-driven rally since the crisis, and they've definitely propped up the market um, this way. Year to date, the bit, the five biggest stocks are up 10%, while the remaining 495 S&P 500 companies are lower by a collective 13%, which is unbelievable. Um, so Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google have led to this incredible rally, um, but really narrow market breadth. So Amazon up 24% circa, um, Microsoft 12%, um, and they've even posted positive absolute year to date returns, and this is versus the negative 9% uh, for the S&P 500. So huge concentration in these indices. So if these tech names start to unravel, you know, uh, look out below. So what we've seen definitely um, is the markets and the economy and the huge dislocation between the two. Um, so I get asked about this all the time. GDP from the US was down 4.8%. Unemployment could reach 20 to 30%. 30 million job, jobless claims, 20 million jobs lost in uh, April, according to ADP figures just out. The, the most, uh, or the you know, the most job losses during the financial crisis in one month was 874,000. So that really puts it into perspective. Wages have been stagnating or falling for those that have jobs. Yet yeah, it's been the best uh, month for stocks in 33 years. Capital markets are open for Wall Street. The Fed's um, you know propping up uh, markets. Uh, here, there, and everywhere, um, the disconnect between the 1% and the 99%, between Wall Street and Main Street, uh, between those that have financial assets uh, and those living you know, paycheck to paycheck has never been so high. We had the PMIs out today um, and over the, you know, the recent days. Um, PMIs being above 50 is uh, expansionary, below 50 is contractionary. The Eurozone, 13.6. UK, 13.8. Uh, the US, 27 France 11.2, India 5.4, South Africa 5.1. So this is just terrible economic data. Um, yet we're you know nearly all time highs in the in the stock market. So look at the the these readings as the, a true barometer of the economy's health rather than the markets because that is an inflation of financial asset prices as a result of government and central central bank uh, support. So one asset I do like, uh, and as I'm recording this video, it's puking a bit, uh, selling off quite dramatically. Um, so gold to double in value. So why would you hold gold in your portfolio? It's a hedge against inflation, great store of value historically, indestructible, indivisible. Um, and it's a great way to reduce your volatility and, and risk, but to improve uh, returns in a portfolio uh, context. Hedge funds have recently turned really bullish on gold. Um, the US deficit is about to reach 100% of GDP or forecasted to. 
too. We've seen the extreme monetization of debt uh, from central banks all over the world. The last time the Fed tripled the balance sheet like they have now, gold then doubled in value. Um, so we've seen the M2 money supply increasing. What are the risks for, for something like gold? Real yields rising. So like we just saw um, you know, in the last half an hour or so, um, the Federal Reserve are issuing now 20-year bonds to obviously finance all of this. Um, this is extra supply on the market, spiking real yields. And as a result, um, gold uh, is taking a, you know, a bit of price pressure uh, to the downside. But um, when this happens, I think, yeah, the equity market does have more risk to the downside. But like we saw before, when equity markets were selling off, this was actually being used as margin calls. Uh, the gold positions were being used as mar um, to cover equity margin calls. So that's definitely a risk that I would uh, take into account. Um, there's going to be more headline risk. I think Trump's definitely taken focus on China. Um, basically saying it was a horrible mistake. They covered the COVID-19 outbreak. The truth is there's going to be loads of conspiracy stories uh, emerging from this, but we'll never know, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but one thing uh, that is for certain, I think this is going to have a huge implication, the, the coronavirus that is, on US-China trade walks, the uh, talks, the election this year, and the euro area going forward, just because there's going to be under huge pressure um, both economies, markets, they're going to be under huge pressure. There's, there's such a divergence between the objectives of, let's say, northern European states like Germany, Holland, uh, and the southern ones like Portugal, Portugal Greece, Spain, etc. Um, so that's going to lead to huge tensions, um, pressure for the euro, for sure. Um, but the, what I want to focus on is um, JP Morgan taking a look at the sensitivity of the president's tweets uh, on interest rate volatility. So Content has drifted away from market moving topics recently or over the last few months, um, where as we kind of saw resolution from the trade war, uh, the quantitative impact therefore has then declined, uh, according to JP Morgan, 70% from their peak. So should the president now take focus again with the global economy in such a fragile uh, state, with valuations extremely stretched, um, I think the market sensitivity of these tweets is going to increase dramatically uh, and the quantitative impact they have on markets. So t take a look out for that. More geopolitical uh, tensions rising. This is going to come into focus again. Um, so things to watch. Uh, why should uh, you know uh, Warren Buffett selling his equities worry you? Um, it should. Uh, I think now is the time to de-risk your portfolio. If you've been participating in the gains like we've seen since the bottom, great. Um, I think asset class diversification, not just stock diversification is important. Myself, I am bullish on gold and miners. Um, like we're seeing now, there could be some good pullbacks in gold um, to get long. Um, I think equities are uh, overvalued, valuations are stretched, and the big risk is to the downside. Uh, the Fed has pretty much killed interest rate uh, volatility, bond volatility, but now real yield, yields are spiking and any more supply uh, of government debt uh, is going to um, lead to uh, yields spiking further. So I'm out of my um, treasury long. Um, inflation and deflation, and this is a question I get asked all the time, um, is there going to be inflation as a result of this liquidity? Is there going to be deflation from lack of demand? We're going to see a real clash of inflationary uh, and deflationary forces in my opinion, I think we're going to see, um, you know, a continuation of stagflation or uh, if deflationary forces, but then uh, I, I believe that we're going to see inflation kicking in. Uh, I don't like financials. I haven't for a long time. But like we saw recently from the ECB, if there's short-term relief in terms of government, central bank support to ensure this liquidity in terms of them lending to businesses, you know, there could be some short-term opportunities there. Um, oil was crazy a few weeks ago, um, but now it seems that the demand side has bottomed out. Um, you know, I think, you know, we hit $30 a barrel. I think we're overextended now. Um, obviously, it's the start of um, this month. We, we are now looking at June um, futures contracts. Um, so will we have that storage problem? I don't think it's gone away. Um, the demand side will probably uh, improve as the coronavirus um, kind of sanctions and lockdowns are relieved uh, in terms of Italy, Spain, you know, starting to let people out, businesses out. This could uh, bring some demand back online. Uh, but I do think we're 
were slightly overextended, given that um, you know my analysis before was we are sub thirty-five dollars a barrel until twenty twenty-one, according to the futures curve. Um, obviously, the best strategy buy what the Fed buys before they buy it. Um, front running the Fed and Bank of America have written a note to the Fed. JP Morgan, BlackRock uh, are all basically saying that um, you know if you bought uh, the S and P every time uh, during open market operations uh, performed by the Federal Reserve, you know, you would have done extremely well. Um, the lockdown easings will be bullish short term, but this does not get away from the fact that the coronavirus has caused a huge demand shock. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's not going to be uh, a quick fix um, but any headlines like lockdowns easing will uh, most likely see asset prices uh, inflate uh, further. Um, EM is going to be under huge pressure. They're using huge amounts of foreign exchange reserve to prop up their current uh, currency against the dollar. And obviously, the, there's been a huge shortage of do dollar um, dollars around the world. And this has been eased by the swaps. But obviously, there's been a, another kind of pressure of the Fed liquidity and the printing of money, which could lead to uh, a monetization of debt. Um, lots more to talk about, I'm sure. But I wanted to just record a, um, a quick video for you um, for the bank holiday weekend. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, and take care.